expedition off the coast of Chile with the German research vessel Zona. Scientists from the Kiel-based Collaborative Research Center 574, volatiles and fluids in subduction zones, investigate the area where the Nazca plate is pushed under the continental South American plate. They aim to learn more about the pathways and fluxes of fluids and volatile components in the subduction zone and would like to better assess the risks of earthquakes, slides and tsunamis. The deep sea robot Rof Kiel 6000 is launched. The remotely operated vehicle delivers videos from a depth of up to six kilometers in real time. It is able to take samples and place instruments or rescue them. Thus, the scientists are able to enter regions that were never viewed by humans before. Rays and floating sea cucumbers accompany Kiel 6000 into the deep. Directly in front of the Roth's cameras, squids feed on Neptune's rich bounty. Life seems to be intact. But only a few meters further on, the situation is very different. The scientists detect landslides, cracks and depressions. The great earthquake in February 2010 left its marks in the deep. Instruments show that the seawater at the cracks and depressions contains very large amounts of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas. Generally, the sea floor only contains small amounts. The gas is then taken up and rendered harmless by bacteria. But if the methane flux from the deep rises or bubbles are formed, these highly specialized organisms reach their limits. In that case, methane bubbles can easily rise from the sediment into upper ocean layers or even up to the surface. In the subduction zone off the coast of Chile, substances from the sea floor not only reach the atmosphere through water, but also through volcanism. When one continental plate submerges under another one, it is exposed to increased pressure and rising temperatures. The rock is transformed and water is released. The water rises into the Earth's mantle, and the upper mantle lowers the melting temperature of the rocks. Magma develops and transports the water and other soluble materials from the subducting plate to the surface. Through degassing and eruption of volcanoes, these substances can even reach the atmosphere. This is why marine scientists from Kiel also do research on land to better estimate the risks of earthquakes and volcanoes. In the spring of 2011, only months after the expedition with the research vessel Zonner, three different research groups are out at the same time. Each group concentrates on a different floor of the subduction zone. Kai Hörnler and Heidi Wehrmann examine the reciprocity between the subducting plate and the overlying mantle. Their research concentrates on the rocks from primitive magma that was not stored in the chambers for a long time, but ascended relatively unchanged. A group of scientists headed by Armin Freund and Stefan Kutterolf is interested in the other end of the spectrum. Developed magma that has been stored in the Earth's crust over such a long period of time that its chemical constitution has changed. From the deposits in the area, the scientists can deduce the strength of previous eruptions. Later on, the gas content of the rocks is measured in the laboratory to detect the trigger of the eruption. The observations made and the data generated are the basis for hypotheses about the future of a volcano. To monitor current processes, Tor Hanstein and Stefan Bredemeyer have installed gas measuring instruments at some volcanoes. These instruments detect gases in the atmosphere and allow to draw conclusions on the occurrences inside the vent that can cause eruptions. The more the scientists know about the past of the volcanoes, the better they can estimate the subsequent developments. Every volcano follows its own rules. To make predictions about the future, it's highly important to have knowledge about historic development of the volcano. We would like to understand how volatiles that enter the inner earth through subduction and escape through volcanism are processed on their way. Also, if a volcano has followed a certain pattern in the past, we can extrapolate this pattern into the future in order to make predictions about how it will likely behave in the future. 
in Zukunft verhalten wird. While Armin Freund and his colleagues examine deposits of the volcano Yaima, which last erupted in 2008, the Kiel volcanologist Tor Hansteen has noticed an error in the gas measuring system. The system supports the Observatorio Volcanológico de los Andes del Sur, off DAS, in monitoring volcanoes and predicting earthquakes. Hello, how's it going at your end? Yes, we've controlled the station. It was in fact one of the mini-computers that was broken down. We've been cooperating with the OFDAS for two years now and have equipped two volcanoes that are situated close to Temuco, Yaima and Villarica with mini DOAS instruments. The most important thing is that we've added a new type of data to the observatory's measurements and are now able to connect seismic data with data about the gas flow. This opens new monitoring opportunities. These mini DOA systems have the task of measuring SO2, that's sulfur dioxide. And now we have a problem at Los Nevados. We have to go up there soon. At the station Los Nevados, from where gases in Villa Rica volcano's plume are measured, the electronics have failed. Fortunately, the researchers from Kiel brought along everything they need to get the station up and running again. As the measurement system provides correct information again, the volcanologists can collect more data from even closer to the crater's edge. From there, they get a direct glimpse of the inner Earth. We've chosen Via Rica for our research due to its high activity. Thus, we can learn a lot about the volcano. We measure volcanic gases, and in this case, the gases come directly from the lava. In fact, there is a small lava lake about 100 meters below. This means there is a direct connection between the gases and the magma, and the magma itself has a direct connection to the subduction zone. The operating sites can not always be reached by car or on foot. Heidi Wehrmann and Kai Hörnler need to go deep into the country. They take horses to reach their destination, Tingiririka volcano. I think it's the fifth time we've been to this place. We sampled all the relevant volcanoes, from Chai Ten in the south to Tupunga Tito in the north, close to Santiago. Tingiririca in particular marks a very important spot for us, since this is where the composition of the magma changes. And therefore, we would like to analyze this volcano in an as detailed way as possible. Especially the younger stuff, the tephras, that are to be found on the very top. And thus, the two riders travel the last stretch of the way on foot. Thousands of meters above sea level, they're looking for rocks containing traces of substances which have been transported from the bottom of the ocean to the inner Earth. Laboratory analysis will later show whether the loop from the sea floor to the atmosphere is really closed. Step by step, the team of scientists from Kiel gets closer to their aim of understanding the volcanic system in the subduction zone along the coast of Chile. Mm -hmm.